I grew up in church, played music from the time I can remember. It's just what I did, and led worship from behind an acoustic guitar in more recent times as a worship leader, and then before that it was a, uh, you know, the wave your hand behind the podium, directing the people to sing like a choir and whatnot. And from the time he was just a little tight, a year and a half, two years old, he would run up onto the stage and want to be in my arms and help me lead the music from up front. He was very, uh, very outgoing about that. And as time went along, he became my bass player in our worship band, which was fun. It was a pretty much a highlight for me. I thought, this is cool. I get to play music with my kids, you know. And then um, as time went along, he was wearing my guitar out during the week. I didn't realize how much time he was spending on my guitar at home. And eventually our roles kind of re switched and he became a guitar player and I decided if I was going to be able to be a part of his thing, I better go ahead and pick up the bass and get my chops up to speed. And so that's what we did. And um, from there, uh, there was a lot of years early on for him of just going to open blues jams wherever we could find places to play music and whatnot. And, and we just decided to take what we have in a great relationship as a father and son and just turn it into something that we really enjoy doing together. And we do. It's a, it's it's one of those things that's a highlight for both of us. I think I can speak for him on that. And, um, it's something we just enjoy. And I don't think I've ever been around another musician who I felt was more dedicated to learning not only his his craft but becoming. He just he's hungry like a lot of people aren't. Um, that's not to throw aspersions on anybody else, but it's just it's refreshing and it's it's even encouraging to me as a as a fellow musician, not just as a dad, but as a fellow musician to see somebody who's just really anxious to to make something happen. But I remember talking to my dad one time when I was pretty young, and I told him I said I don't I don't know how to explain this, but but there's something inside of me I have to get out. I don't know what it is. It's like this, it's part of me. It's, it's, it's in my fiber. And, I, and he, he just looked across the, we were sitting in the truck and he just looked across the truck at me and I was like, what are you talking about? You know? And I, I just, I didn't know what to think about how he couldn't understand that. Well, fast forward a lot of years and CJ had heard me relate that story. And I remember one time we were out playing somewhere and we were on our way home after a, a blues jam or something and he reached over and grabbed my arm and he said, he said, you know, he said, that story you used to tell about your dad and you, he said, I, I know exactly what you're talking about. And it was a, it was a bond instantly that we knew, it's like, yeah, you do. And I could tell, I, I think he is gifted, but I think maybe the way we like to refer to that is more that he's just simply been given a gift. And it's not so much that he is anything as much as it is that it's something that's just more or less been bestowed on him. And he sees it that way, and I, I do too. I don't think that he thinks of himself as in any way above somebody else or anything like that. It's just simply that he knows that there's been something given to him. And there's a responsibility that comes with that, and that responsibility is to share it and let it be something that helps uplift other people. And, the reason to be commercial about what we're doing is so that there's more opportunity to to deliver this thing that's inside of us that needs to come out. So if we could do it and didn't have to make money because we were independently wealthy, that would be ideal. So maybe if we can sell a few tunes and sell a few shows, then we have the opportunity to really deliver the package of you know, what, what it is that he's, his gift is all about. What struck me as much as anything about what we've done, what I've been able to be a, a component of, of the shows, is that there's a camaraderie amongst the songwriters and a support, and, a, a, and then that creates an environment. It's kind of like a sneak peek into what's happening in the world of of some artist's mind as they're painting a picture. You know, you, you don't think about, well, what's going through the, you know, Picasso's mind as, as the painting's coming out. But this gives an opportunity for people who don't necessarily relate on the level of musicians, songwriters particularly, it gives them an opportunity to, um, to kind of get a peek into this world that's completely probably foreign to them under any other circumstance. So. 
that's to me the primary difference. It's not just a show, sit back, entertain me. It's more, oh wow, I'm starting to understand what's happening in Jack or Diane's mind or CJ's mind when they're putting a song together. I, I get it. And I think that's part of what this is all about, is, is the get it aspect. My philosophy is that 50 years ago a hit song was comprised of a ton of talent and people recognized the talent and said, there's something cool. And then as times progressed with the video age that we live in, uh, video, um, as times progressed, I, what I've seen and what I believe I've seen happen um, has been a, a progression of, of um, attention to something totally different than the art of the artist. It's gone to how pretty of a face do you have, how good can you shake it, um, how good is the videography involved, how good is the sound production, um, how much hype is there about the show or about the song, or, or how much of an edge of the envelope can we press, or what kind of a hook does the song have so that I can go, ah, oh, that finally got to me. And I really think that we've lost an appreciation for the art itself. That being said, what I think that Music Circle South does is it lets people get a, like I was saying earlier, a sneak peek into the artist's mind and the artist's approach to a song. And a lot of times you'll hear a songwriter at, at one of these shows who will do a song and you'll go, oh, I know that song, I've heard it on the radio. But then when you listen to it, you realize that what you're hearing is that artist on an acoustic guitar, maybe another musician piping in a little bit, but for the most part it's just them on the very stripped down version of this song. It's not the, the huge production that it turned into to become the hit. And so now all of a sudden you start to realize, well if that song sounded so simple as a, as a broken down, simplified song, I wonder what other cool songs I'm hearing in this show tonight either will be a hit or could be a hit if the same production and hype and the tinsel <laughs> was added to it. And that's not, I, I, don't, I, don't, I just think that's what people don't get until they get to a situation like this where and that's the connection that a songwriter's popular song from something past helps tie to something that they're doing now. The years I spent in church gave me an appreciation for somebody who just simply wanted to express their heart. And so I've sat through some pretty grueling solos by some very sweet ladies who God loved them. Somebody told them they had a talent in the singing world. But, you know, in that scenario, in that church environment, grace abounds. You sit back and you go, you know what, it's, who am I to judge that person for portraying their gift? And I think that there's lots of places for that outlet to happen. What's great about Music Circle South is that those same creative hearts are still in play, but what's happened is that this is a, a bringing together of some of those artists who have also been given that gift that we were talking about, that, that, that added element. And so there's a, a level of musicianship that is is a second to none pro level and on top of that that total soul heart that happens when a songwriter's sincere and real about what they're doing but we're just we're just ex really honored to be able to be a part of uh, and have had an opportunity a time or two to be a part of music circle south it's fun um, cj loves to do it we talk about it a lot and um, it's certainly a huge departure from what we're doing on stage with with full-blown amplifiers and the whole nine yards. But at the same time, it's just another avenue for that art to escape, to get out. And so that's, it, it's, it's an honor we love to do it.